Welcome to Mastering Your Financial Life, hosted by Judy Heft, the founder and CEO of Judith Heft & Associates Financial & Lifestyle Concierge. This year, they're celebrating 26 years in business. In every episode, Judy interviews professionals who help others successfully manage their financial lives. You can find this show on YouTube, LinkedIn, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and more. Judy is the author of two books, How to Be Smart, Successful, and Organized with Your Money, For a Better Today and Tomorrow, and her latest book, Mastering Your Financial Life Cycles, How to Successfully Manage Money in Every Decade of Life. You can read chapters of her books and catch prior episodes of this show at www.juditheft.com. Now here's the host of Mastering Your Financial Life, Judy Heft. Hi, everybody, and welcome. Welcome to this episode. And today I'm so excited. I'm thrilled to be talking to my coach, my mentor, Fabian Fredrickson, who's the founder of Bold Heart Business. It used to be called Client Attraction Business. And I worked with Fabian for over four years. And Fabian, I'm so happy to have you here because I wouldn't be in this position today if it wasn't for you and everything I've learned from your program. You taught me how to scale my business. I think when I started with you, I had one employee, maybe two. There's 12 people on our team now, which is very exciting. And I learned how to set boundaries and have a balance in my life and things are just going really well and i owe so much of it practically probably all of it to you and our meeting and i'm just thrilled to be here with you so i'm sure i didn't introduce you and say everything that's great about you so i'm going to leave it up to you to introduce yourself a little bit too so welcome thank you and everybody who's here seriously you are in the company of a superstar judy heft is somebody we all look up to judy you are an amazing individual and i just feel incredibly blessed to be with you uh just to have all this time but also just today so thank you for having me on your wonderful podcast oh it's a pleasure to have you here so yeah, Fabian, so I just, you know, I want to talk to you about some things. So, you know, I think one of the things I really learned well from you was how to bring my femininity to the table. So for so many years as a businesswoman, we're surrounded at these tables and there's mostly men. And then we, so we become a little more masculine in our thoughts and we suppress, I did anyway, I suppress the femininity part of me. And so I think that that's one of the things that you taught me how to be a woman again you know, in so many aspects. So how do they, how do you handle that? How do you teach women how to handle being feminine, but still being successful in business? Yeah, I'm really glad you're asking this. So if you think about the fact, I mean, this is not something we talk about often in business. We don't really talk about masculine and feminine energy, but when I speak to women, even just of audiences, and I say the following, there is a big recognition point. And the idea that the, everything masculine, especially in business, has been rewarded for thousands of years. So the, the thinking that you can control somebody, that you have to do, 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 and push and hustle and really deplete yourself is a very masculine concept. I'll tell you this, when I first started my business 21 years ago, I was looking for mentors to teach me because I didn't have any clients. I needed to figure out fast how to get clients. And everybody who was successful practically was a man, or at least everybody who was teaching it. And while I love men, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, no question, I, I experienced a lot of bro marketing, bro sales, bro networking, I mean, and you are a networking master, Judy, but you bring this warmth, right? And, and, and every time I was learning how to close the sale or market in that way that just didn't seem like me, it felt inauthentic. I didn't want to do it. And so what I've noticed over the last 20 plus years of being a business coach to women is that they put marketing on a back burner. Why? Because it doesn't feel like them. I'll tell you this. I would normally not talk about this, but literally 20 minutes ago, I went on a sales call, meaning I was a prospective buyer and I, I wanted to buy the product. I just wanted them. I, I didn't want to be sold to. I wanted to buy. I had credit card in hand. I just needed to know which one to buy. 
this guy took me through this 45 minute sales process and throughout, it was just like strong arming after strong arming. I can't do that, Judy. I no. just, I told him like, just tell me I'm ready to buy it. I have my credit card. And, and in the end I walk away and I'm not buying anything. So here's what I want to say about masculine versus feminine. The masculine way of doing business is fabulous, but not all the time. Okay. Mm -hmm. There is something that we as, as women are missing and it's that uh, being time. It's that feeling like we pull people in as opposed to pushing the sale, pushing the marketing. It's about collaboration. It's about connection. It's about uh, nurturing. It's about making space and connection and friendship. This is how women like to be marketed to. They like to be marketed to. I know I'm going on a limb here and some people might disagree with me, but I love to be marketed to with love, with significance. Like I want to feel significance. I want to feel cared for. I want to feel seen and honored and not feel like I'm a peon in somebody's game. And when we realize that as women and we give ourselves permission, even though the feminine has been tolerated in business or ridiculed over like countless years, when we can accept who we are and agree to be as feminine as possible, knowing that that is a superpower and sometimes go into our masculine, we win. More that's people so are That's so true. And I think that's one of the things I learned. So when I started adding, signing my newsletters, Love Judy and things like that and changed my marketing, you taught me that I'm a marketer more than a businesswoman. And I brought my own personal uh, personality, my own personality into the marketing. I think that's when things really excuse me, started to change for me and open up and I became more authentic. You know, I wasn't hiding behind any glass window or anything like that. This is what you, what you see is what you get. And and your business soared because of it. True. Yes. People, people were reaching out to you. You were doing more um, networking. You were really embracing your brilliance. And part of your brilliance is nurturing and loving and and connecting people and collaborating and and all of that by you embracing your feminine you grew your business exponentially i'll never forget that it's so true i really did and you know i i didn't even know it i think that we run our businesses a certain way from what we we're taught like we had male coaches and everything and and we what's expected of us you know as women and then you know, it didn't doesn't always work because it's not our real selves. It's not who we authentically are. And I think that's really important. And here's the key. If we're going to talk about client attraction. So so my specialty, as you know, Judy, but just so you, everybody knows here, my specialty is to in the past has been to take women from five figures to six figures. But my real sweet spot over the last 10, 15 years is to take women who are overwhelmed at six figures and get this get them to seven figures with their life back. And that means many, many weeks of unplugged vacations per year. And Judy, like you have really benefited from that. But part of that is to stop putting on a mask and trying to be somebody you're not, especially women. If, if some of us here have women as clients, we smell authenticity as if it's like smelly socks. We don't want to be sold. We want to be honored. And so on the on the giving end of marketing, when your marketing is a love letter, not a strong arm, when you can love through your podcast, like here, love through your books, love through your email newsletter, love through your speaking, your networking, people are attracted to that. The When you are the highest expression, the fullest expression of who you really are in your marketing, in your services, in your sales process, people fall over and want to be with you because they're tired of all that other garbage. A oh, good word to use. I was trying to, I was wondering what you were going to say there. <laughs> you could say crap or something like that. Yeah. So but yeah, it is a lot of garbage that we have to, you know, wade through the mire and the muck as it is. And we, it's like we roll our eyes, like we can see it coming a mile away and we don't want that. 
Yeah, I've had the experience that you had this morning with someone, the salesperson strong arming you. I've had the same situation. And find, sometimes I just want to say, just let's just cut to the chase. Like, I don't need to hear this whole spiel. Like, let's get real here and talk about three it. Three times. I said it three times. And at the end, I'm, I'm just like, you're not getting it. You know what? I think they're reading, a, not literally reading, but they have this speech in their head that they're speaking and they don't connect on an really more intimate basis i think it's important to be intimate with your clients to really and that's part of the vulnerability and that's one of the things i've learned too and that really has helped me it really has it's yeah, been people, great. people trust vulnerability authenticity mm -hmm. and true expression from the heart people do not trust formula gotta stick to the script judy gotta stick to the, yeah. the seven yeses and you know, honestly, if 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 you are female or male or however you identify and you're listening to this, like, I want you to really listen to your heart. Who are you really? And the best way to scale your business, whether you're scaling it to 10K a month or 250 a year, 500 a million, the way to do that is to really be you. And so why my company is called Bullheart. It's because I want you to take your ear to your heart and listen really hard. Who are you? What are you passionate about? What are, you, what are your quirks? What, are your, what, what is it that makes you you? Because the, the, the most authentic you are, you're not gonna be attractive to everybody, but people who are really themselves are super attractive. So put your ear to your heart and listen hard and then boldly go out there and let people know you exist. And that's so true. I think, yeah, I mean, do you think it's possible to have it all in business? You know, whatever that is, like to really have that good life work balance or work life balance, I guess is what it's called, you know, just to be able to figure it out and just to know that, like you said before, the unplugged vacations, you know, I learned how to do that. And just having a good team to back you up that you can trust, that you know, that can handle your business for you so you don't have to be there 24-7. Well, I'll say this. I believe that you can have it all when, when, you, when, when you stay to what's true about having it all in your heart, right? Mm -hmm. So there's, a, and you know me, you, you've been to my, my former house with the, you know, 13 bathrooms and, you know, all the all things. But you know what I realized, Judy? That wasn't really me. Oh, interesting, Fabian. There's a part of it that was me, which is the sweeping spaces and, you know, big entertaining. You know this about me. Like, yeah. love, love to entertain. Love. What? You do love to entertain. I do. I really do. Um, but in the end, when you, when you look into your heart and you ask yourself, what do I really want? Most people are not looking for the you know the, the, the all that that maybe wall street wants you to have or media wants you to have so this is again about listening to your heart mm -hmm. and asking what is it that 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 i value above everything else and for me it's freedom for me it's you know i live here in france now i i now shift between paris and provence and you you were there in the beginning um, we've spent a week in Provence. Yeah, so we had a wonderful week in Provence. I'm ready to do it again. Yeah. And the way to have it all first is to not buy into everybody else in your neighborhood, your, your Joneses, keeping up with them, is to say, what matters to me? And then setting boundaries around that and say, say no to all that um, doesn't actually really matter to you and saying yes to what does. And then the secret is to get help at work and at home, to have systems at work and at home, to have team at work and at home. You know, I have three children. You have you have children, grown children, and now um, wonderful little people. Yeah. And you know that it's hard to build a business when you've got, I mean, I, uh, I think, when Oliver was born, I had just crossed the million dollar mark. So that was like 13, 14 years ago. Um, and I had my little kids when I was, you know, growing that I've been at multiple seven figures for 14 years. I did it all while they were little, but you know what? 
I need, it, it takes a village in the sense of like, if you're going to invest in your business, make sure that you invest in somebody helping you clean your house, absolutely helping you run some errands. And, and what I've learned is not from a place of, I, I, it's beneath me from a place of, Hey, can, can you please help me with this? Because I can't do it all. And when you have people help you at home and you have people help you at work and you put a focus on the systems uh, and you know, I have a book called the leveraged business and yes. the two chapters are leverage your team and leverage your systems. When you have that, then you can leverage your time. And when you have your time back, you can focus on what we call exponential growth activities, EGAs. And I recommend that everybody here listening, whether you're just starting out in your business or you're already at multiple seven or eight figures, you take at least one day a week. That's called what we call an EGA day, a day solely focused to on exponential growth activities so that you stop working on evenings and weekends. You're just focusing on exponential stuff. You delegate the rest, you create systems. And then when you're with your kids or your grandkids, you're fully there. You don't say one more email and mommy will be right there. When you're with your kids, you're with your kids. When you're with your spouse or whoever you love, you're, you're with them and and then when you're at work you're totally focused and you're getting help that is how i believe that combination of getting help and creating systems so that you get in your life back and also asking yourself what does having it all mean to me for me it meant freedom for me it's 14 to 16 weeks of vacations per year, working three to four hours, balancing between Paris and Provence. But mine is not the thing. What's your thing, right? Everybody. You have Manhattan, you have travel, you have, you have, you're spending more time with your, your little people, uh, you know, all the people you love. That's what matters to you. That's what having it all means. That's so true. It's different for everybody. So we're going to take a little break now, Fabian. And then when we come back, I want you to talk to me a little bit about your book, Leverage Business, because I think that encompasses everything that we learned in the program and it can help so many people. It, it helped me a lot. So let's take a little break now and then we'll come back and talk some more. This is great. Hey there. I just want to tell you a little bit about my new book that just came out called Mastering Your Financial Life Cycles. And here it is. It's how to successfully manage your money in every decade of life. I co-authored this with my CFO, Liz Levy. And together we created this manual that's going to help you through every stage of life. We talk about having a baby. We talk about young adulthood, pre-retirement, what to do when you're at that age of retirement, if you're contemplating divorce, do you need an estate plan? We cover all of these, each subject in a different chapter. And I really think that you're going to find this so helpful because at the end of every chapter, we have checklists that you can look at and you can use and they can be a guide for you. So this is a wonderful manual that we've created. It's available on Amazon. You can also find it on our website at judithhepp.com slash book. And we're here for you. If you need anything, reach out. I hope you enjoy the book. Here's another picture of it, just so you know what's going on. Here it is. And I'm really proud of it. It's my second book. And I'd love to have you uh, read it and give me your feedback. Judy Heft, judithheft.com, financial and lifestyle concierge, celebrating 26 years in business. And over the years, I've learned so much. And what I've been trying to do is impart a little bit of this knowledge to you so I can help all of you become as financially organized as I am. Fabian, so I'm glad. So now we're back with Fabian. And one of the things I was thinking about when you were talking about, and then we're going to get to your book in a minute, but you were talking about finding someone to help you clean or whatever, drive the kids so you don't have to, so you can work. And you know what? And then almost two years ago, we started the lifestyle division. And that's exactly what we're doing for people. We're helping them get the services that they need. And, you know, successful people, whether you're an entrepreneur or you have a, you know, a corporate type job, you need to be able to delegate these things. So you do have the time to do the things that matter to you most. And that's really been helpful. And also back to my book, 
which I just talked about a little bit in the commercial. I wouldn't have written this book if it wasn't for you. So when I first joined Bolt Heart, that was one of the first tasks that you told the people to do. You said, everybody's got to write a book. I'm like, write a book. I've been here for five minutes. And I challenged myself and I wrote the book. So thank you for that. And now I have my second one out. So I'm pretty excited about that. Your, your second one, I mean, they're both amazing, but your second one is so innovative in the sense that you just pick it up and go straight to your life cycle, but then you can help, you know, with like maybe my daughter who's um, in a young adult, I can say, hey, Claire, read this. And this is something that I have mm -hmm. never seen before where you can just dive in. High five, Judy. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So let's talk about your book, Leverage Business, because it's wonderful. I loved reading it. It reminded me of some a lot of the things that I learned. Sometimes it's good to have a little refresher course, too. Yeah. yeah. So so the reason I wrote this book is because, like I said, I've been at multiple seven figures. Just a fact. But hey, can we just celebrate that? Because not many. Yeah, congratulations. That's right. fantastic. You've been, you've been very successful in your own. I'm there right with you. You're there. And um, people just kept asking, okay, I know other people who are at seven figures or multiple seven figures, but I've never seen them take as much time off as you do. How did you do it? And how did you do it in a feminine way? Which is the question you asked. There you go. So I basically, a bunch of years ago, sat down and I reverse engineered how I did it. And... I, I broke it down into eight things. Now I'm just going to say this, this is not rocket science, but I have an approach to it that is that more feminine, more, I'm not going to work until my adrenals give out and, you know, I have no life and, and my, my kids and my marriage break apart. I believe in having a, an, an obscenely high quality of life in the sense of how much pleasure can I bring into my life now? I know that pleasure is not a word that in um, Anglo-Saxon countries is, is really celebrated because we say, uh, in, in at least in America, we associate pleasure with guilty pleasure or sinful pleasure. I don't look at it that way. I'm like, how much impact can a woman have on her ideal clients, like in her community, in the world? How many lives or businesses can she change while having a really great team, while taking home lots of good money, uh, while being, uh, you know, having plenty of time to enjoy yourself, to be a present mother, to be a present uh, in, in her love relationship. So I reverse engineered it and I was like, okay, so this is actually a predictable process because as you know, you've seen it. I've taken so many, many, many women to a million with a focus on that. How good can I have it? Um, and, and a couple great guys too, <laughs> but it's mostly women. We start with leverage your team. And I, what, I've, what I've noticed is there is no such thing as a self-made millionaire. You, so got, you got you got to have the right team. And what happened, I mean, I don't know how much I can share about your story, but when, when you brought yeah. somebody to help you run your business, Karen, right? Exactly. It shifted for you, but most of us, hire people just like, oh, I like you, come and work in my business, but that's not how we hire. No. How we hire is very strategically for that role with assessments. You used assessments to get Karen in. We, we I remember we talked about the yes. assessment results. You helped me with them. You helped me analyze them. So that was great. Yeah. And, and when you have the assessments and when you hire for culture as well, and when you train the person and onboard the person to understand that they're running the, I'm just going to say something controversial. The person who started the business is not the person who should be running the business. Mm -hmm. Interesting. That's true, though. I think I've learned that. I believe you now. You might yeah. not have believed that five years ago. <laughs> I know. It's super controversial because most of us who are the typical entrepreneur are high idea generators. We love to start start things right and we you know uh, if you think about the word entrepreneur it comes from the french word entreprendre like that's like try saying that three times fast <laughs> entreprendre which means to initiate like hmm. typical entrepreneurs love to initiate and they're not always great at finishing things dotting the i's crossing the t's 
And so we're not always the person who can look at all the spreadsheets and make sure that everybody fills in their timesheet and all of that. Like we can do it, right? But this is not what we love to do. For example, you love to help your clients get financially solvent, create the best lives. But if it's like checking, you know, a timesheet, that's not what you should be doing. You have to learn, you know, I think we need to learn what our unique brilliance is, right? What yeah. are we really good at? We can do all of these things. But do we want to? And do we really love doing them? You can do it. And this is what we call our competence. Um, when we, we, you, we, most of us can do everything. And that's how we started in our business, being right. involved in everything. Um, but it's not because you can do it that you should do it. And this means, in, at least in the Bold Heart Business Program, I don't want you to do any of that. I want you to be in, because you call it your unique brilliance, right? And I do this, if you're seeing this on, on video, because um, there's a, a four quadrants that I talk about. And the unique brilliance is, what is it that lights you up? There's, for most of us, it's three to five activities in your business that light you up, that you would do for free all day long. And that's actually where you make 80% of your money, but you're spending so much time in the competence quadrant of, well, I can do it, but frankly, somebody else can do it better. This is where, and I'm talking a lot these days about 80-20 marketing, 80-20 um, activities, and it's actually part of the book in the Leverage Your Marketing chapter, chapter five in the Leveraged Business book. Um, I talk about the fact that most people are spending 80% of their time on activities that bring only 20% of results. Mm. So it's the Pareto principle, the 80-20 rule. But if you if you start thinking about the 20% of activities that bring 80% of the results, this becomes super interesting. That makes more sense. That makes more sense, right? It's more financially viable too. And so if you stop doing the 80% that produces the 20%, you focus all of your time on the 20% that gives you the 80%, those are your unique brilliance activities. And this is where it changes everything. Not only do you start enjoying your business more, you're more productive, you get better results, and your joy level just, it's like your cup overfloweth. But here's the thing. And you know this because we've talked about this for four plus years, right? When it's not just you that's in your unique brilliance, but it's your entire team, where the person who runs your business to the person who's doing your admin to the person who's doing the books or whatever, when everybody loves their job and they would theoretically do it for free, not you know, just for like a day. <laughs> no, you know, we, we are. Really I know what you mean, though. They love it so much because they just feel validated and worthy and, and all of that. This is this is a team that's going to get to seven figures and multiple seven figures because everybody is in a, in a high state of joy, high state of productivity. They work well together and all that. So that's actually just the first activator of the eight activators. And then of course, when you can create, when, when you can remove yourself from the day-to-day -day operations of your business, because everything is documented and can be then delegated to this amazing team, you don't have to be the bottleneck anymore. I'll tell you though, it's not in, it's not as easy as it sounds in the beginning. Because Absolutely. as an entrepreneur, we started our businesses. Well, I know I did by myself, you know, just organically and learned things myself. And I learned how to do it all. And so it's hard to give certain things up that you're used to doing. And it's hard to detach. And I, I still struggle with that a little bit. I'm working on it. But sometimes I just do things when I know I shouldn't. It's really not my responsibility. I don't have to do it. Get out of the weeds, I think it is. You know, I don't even do my own bookkeeping for my business anymore. I just, you know, my bookkeepers do it. It's not what I want to be spending my time doing. And no. I think a lot of small business, that particular one especially, a lot of small businesses are afraid to delegate that out because, you know, they think they need to do it. But those are those are some of the things that are really important. The marketing, I'm not, a, I don't 
I'm not a social media marketing expert. You know, I know what looks good and what I like and what feels right to me and is authentic, but I have a marketing person that does that for me. And I think, you know, those are the kinds of things that I've learned from you is it's really great, you know, to delegate and learning how to delegate. But like I said, it's not always really easy. It takes no, and, and I think it's, it's creating different muscles because when you mm -hmm. understand that when you first start out, you have more time than you have money. So you're going to want to do everything yourself. Plus, we're a bit of a con control enthusiast in the yeah. sense. Like, and we have to be, right? Right. But after a while, when you realize that you are the bottleneck, and if everything has to go through you, be approved by you, be done by you, there, and there's no more of you to go around, things get stagnant really fast and for many, many years. And this is where we talk about the white knuckling, like if you if you if you're listening to this, just create a fist and 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 make it tight. You'll see that your knuckles will become all white. That white knuckling means that um, you're just you're too controlling in your business, and we all are. Okay, listen, yes. me too, right? Yeah, it can help it sometimes. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that you have to do everything. There's some parts you can control and hopefully you will control the big sales, the big vision, the big culture, right. the big business development. But if everything is documented and followed by all in an operations manual and, and you have you know KPIs, and I know you may be listening to, to this and saying KPIs, like key performance indicators, really in my business it's too, it's too small. No, 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 no. You can do this now. You you may only need to know how many new clients do you need to to sign up per week or per month to reach your year end goal. That that may be your one KPI, but that is what will help you reach new goals. Now, when you can, if we're gonna bounce to um, the leverage your uh, accountability chapter, which is the sixth chapter in the leveraged business book you realize that you don't have to be the only dragon slayer uh you don't have to be the only one growing your business you can involve your whole team the the one person can have this role in getting new clients and one person can have this role uh let's say in your finance department getting people to pay in full or sign up for another year everybody can help and when you leverage every single area of your business, now it's not thinner thighs in 30 days, right? And Judy, we know this. No. Right? You said four years. Um, some people, some people do it in two years, some people do it in five years. But here's what I want to say is most women will never even get to half a million a year, let alone a hundred thousand a year. We're talking about seven figures and multiple seven figures with your life back for the rest of your life. So if it takes four years, if it takes three years, I don't know, I'm okay with that on the receiving end. And most people are too. In fact, if you go to boldheart.com just to be inspired and you go to the success storage page, you just see uh, story after story after story of a woman with little kids at home who, who are at a mill and you know them all right Judy oh, absolutely they're all real people too which is yeah, great. Real people and this is what I say and these are people that you would be like at the grocery store they would be in front of you and you you would have no idea that she's generating a million a year because she's telling her kids like Oh, can you please not, not don't grab the skittles off the thing please don't hit your brother and you're and you have no idea she's at seven figures that's it's true normal. and this is the thing is like once you follow these eight steps that are in the book which you can get for free on the website just go to boldheart.com it's on the top i give it to you uh, just pay for the two dollars and something shipping but you read this it starts to shift how you think about what's possible for yourself this is a predictable process to get to a million a year. We want to normalize that. It's just normal. Yeah, that's great. Well, this was wonderful talking to you, Fabia, and I always enjoy your smiling face, your beautiful smiling face, and your wisdom, and your the way you, I don't know, you're just so warm and loving and so willing to help other women, especially mostly women, you know, reach that seven-figure mark, and it's just you're very sincere and authentic all the time. And that's what's so great about you. So let's just, you know, before we end, how can people find you? What, you know, what's your sales process? I know that you give a consultation. Let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah. 
So I'll, I'll tell you this, that honestly, the best way to start, well, the, I'll, I'll say the book is the best way to start. So um, I, why, why would I give it away for free? It's on the website, boldheart.com. It's all the way at the top. Why am I giving it for free? I mean, just meet me halfway and pay the $2.95 for shipping. That doesn't even cover the shipping. But it's just, it's showing me that, like, you've got some skin in the game if you can, you know, put $2 to learn how to get to a million. Right. right. My intention for giving the, the book away for free is that the right woman will read it and actually not go through it and be like, oh, my God. I love what I'm reading. I need to talk to somebody on Fabienne's team. So you go to the let's chat, I think it's the top right of the website, and you just say, hey, Bold Heart team, I wanna talk about the program. We are not into the heavy selling business. We wanna hear about you. We wanna hear about what's working, what's not working, and what do you dream of making happen in your business? I mean, do you dream of getting to a million? Do you, or do you just dream of like actually getting to six figures or 250 a year? We'll help you map out what it takes to get there. And if you want to hear more about how we predictably get you there, then we're happy to tell you about the program. And of course, we would love to have you join us. If you're not at that stage yet and you want to see um, what it's what it's like, you can just go to the to the success storage page. But because we're here with Judy Haft, if you go to the programs page, so boldheart.com forward slash programs, you will see there's a mini documentary. It's nine minutes long. Beautiful documentary. And Judy is in the documentary and she's so inspiring, so beautiful and so successful. Tell us about her experience. So just go to the programs page just to see our lovely Judy Heft in the video. <laughs> but, but honestly, just get the book. Let, let me know what you think on social media. You can find me on Fabienne, Fabienne Fred, Fabienne Fredrickson. You'll find me somehow. And what about your new little cookbook that you're going to do? Ah, yes. So here's what's happening. Because I'm only working three to four hours a day, I have all this time. And I have this passion project. And you know, because you came to spend a week with me in Provence, yeah. I love to cook, but not 12 ingredients, three. Not not 12 hours in the kitchen, 15 minutes. And so I'm working on a book called A Delicious Life. And it's a philosophy for living simply but gloriously with very little effort. And I throw in some recipes as well. I love the name of it. That's exciting. Well, that's great. Well, thank you, Fabian. Thank you so much. I can't thank you enough for being my guest. And it's always a pleasure, as I said, to talk to you and see you. And I look forward to spending some more time with you in person, maybe in October. That sounds lovely. I agree. I'm so, so proud for you, Judy. You're such an inspiration to so many people. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. It's great to see you. Mwah. You've been listening to Mastering Your Financial Life, hosted by Judy Heft. Thank you for your positive reviews, comments, and sharing this show with others. You can read chapters of Judy's books and catch prior episodes of Mastering Your Financial Life at www.judithheft.com.